Because they were such high profile attractions at amusement parks and are often featured in films, orcas or killer whales are one of the most familiar forms of sea life. But in the wild, they're increasingly rare. For over four decades, a team of researchers has been studying three pods of orcas in the Pacific Northwest. The data collected has given an inside look at the endangered whales' family structures, their behavior, even their longevity. We met up with one man who's made it his life's mission to watch over and revive the whale population. Off the coast of Port Angeles in Washington state, there's a team that has whale watching down to a science. For the past 45 years, Ken Balcom has taken to the waters of the Pacific Northwest, leading the ORCA survey, a long-term photo identification project focusing on what's known as the southern resident killer whale population of Puget Sound. Well, this is where we had our very first encounter on the 8th of April, 1976. I saw a dorsal fin, and uh, they were heading west, so we turned around and went with them. At 35 years old, camera in hand, Balcom was working for the National Marine Fishery Service and tasked with counting how many whales were left after the practice of capturing killer whales from marine parks ramped up in the 1960s and 70s. A lot of people didn't think we could find them. And then even my boss didn't think if we found him, we could tell him apart. An impossible job made possible using photo ID techniques pioneered by a Canadian marine biologist. It turned Balcom's hundreds of thousands of photos into a scientific database. At that time, we had photographs, 35 millimeter pictures. That was a real key. The results of the survey? Only about 70 orcas remained in the sound, with an astounding 40% of the population having been taken into captivity or killed during a capture attempt. Balcom's findings would help end the trade in killer whales in the Pacific Northwest, but the orcas' man-made problems didn't stop there. In the late 1980s, the whales stopped doing their regular pattern and. Uh, Basically, they weren't coming to Puget Sound twice a month anymore. It was fished out. A depleted food supply, an issue that continues for the whales today, which greatly inhibits their ability to reproduce. This is our indicator, advanced indicator, the canary in the coal mine kind of thing. If we lose the ball on uh, the wild nature, uh, humans are not gonna last very long after that. In response to what he's already witnessed, Balcom founded the nonprofit Center for Whale Research to study the whales and use their findings to promote conservation. As we cruised along the Salish Sea, Balcom told me that orca sightings were a weekly occurrence in these waters decades ago. The orcas have called this place home for many thousands of years, their presence first documented by the Native Americans. But on our voyage, we saw not a single one, a sad situation that Balcom is working to change. Not at sea, but about eight miles upstream on the edge of Olympic National Park. Balcom took us off-roading for a look at both the source of the problem and a possible solution. This is the Elwha, Elwha River. And it's essential to your operation. Uh, it's essential for the whale's food. Right. It's going to bring salmon back to a pristine status where there'll be lots of food for the whales. What happened to the salmon? Well, on this river, it was dams. We had a dam about two miles south of us, and no fish passed that dam for 100 years. The population of the Chinook salmon went from around 30,000 a year to almost zero. In an effort to restore the river's ecosystem, Congress authorized the removal of the Elwha Dam in 1992. <laughs> After decades of planning, the largest dam removal in U.S. history began and was fully removed by March 2012. This river had the biggest salmon that were in the Pacific Northwest. They were up to 125 pounds. Really? Huge fish. And they fed a food chain, and the whales were part of it. So uh, now that the dams have been removed, this is starting to come back, and we want to celebrate it and you know, let the world know that that's how you do it, Reco recover the ecosystem. 
Holcomb went a step further. In October of 2020, at the age of 80 and without a job, his Center for Whale Research purchased this 45-acre ranch bordering both sides of the waterway, where the majority of the remaining Chinook salmon spawn. The $700,000 price tag looming over his head and his heart until a private donor stepped in. When they called up and said, uh, we want to pay it off, I was like, I started shaking. It was an honor. It still is. <laughs> I don't have to worry about that. <laughs> In your legacy, everyone's legacy. It's the whales. It's the whales. Yeah, it's 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 for them. Oh yeah, there they go. A healing process that Balcom can now check in on and record whenever he wants. He took us to the section of the river where the salmon spawn, doubting that we would find any action. It was to our surprise. Oh my God. They're way over there. They're over there. You see them? <laughs> yeah. Way over there. Something's yeah. going down. If it can be done, Balcom says, it will take 20 to 25 years to get the salmon back to their original numbers. But for now, the few fish we spotted together are a sign of hope. We're really lucky. I mean, to be able to just walk up and, oh, there they are. That's like walking up and seeing the whales go by. So. Yeah, it's not quite as exciting, but it's pretty exciting. <laughs> Last year, around 7,000 Chinook salmon were counted in this river. This is the fruit of your labor. This is it. This is what I wanted to see. Last year, I just saw two. This year, what, you had eight over there, or two or three here. They're still coming by. So describe what that feeling is. Uh, oh, this is like, they're back. Where nature's coming back, it's it's just like it's worth it. Money doesn't count. This counts. You know, this is whatever it takes. What what he's been able to do has really been compared to what Jane Goodall did in her work in East Africa with the chim chimpanzee. And you think about it, there are only 73 orcas left in That's Puget insane. Sound. Uh, it really is a testament to one man uh, having an idea and just sticking with it. And he's a guy you cheer for. Yeah, he I is. mean, it just comes through everything he says about it, how much he cares about it. His absolute love for it and that it takes time. Yeah. It takes time.